What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another video. This time we're taking a look at Watchmen. I'm not going to waste no time. This video is going to run long. Let's get right into it. I overall think that Watchmen, to me, is the pinnacle of Zack Schneider's movie-making career. I love the Watchmen movie. I think this movie is great, and I also think that it's kind of ahead of its time in the year that it came out. This movie came out in the year 2009, and it was one of those rare rated R superhero movies that even up to that point, we never really got. And when they did come out, they weren't really uh, successful, mainly because these movies were had dealt with more mature themes and had a very and had a lot of violence to them. And Watchmen is one of those movies. So you can't really market that to a PG-13 crowd. Even though this movie is based off a comic book, it's a more mature comic book that deals with complex themes and has a lot of uh, very uh, char and has a lot of characters who are very who have various forms of shades of gray. Like nobody in Watchmen is this pure character. Everyone has something that's wrong with them. And Watchmen is a perfect example of a superhero movie that takes a that looks at the superhero genre from a realistic, gritty, grounded approach. Now, of course, again, like I said, marketing that to a to a casual audience member is not gonna go so well, which is why Watchmen as a which is why Watchmen in its initial run was kind of a commercial failure because it didn't really gain any attraction. Of course now looking back at it ten years later, if Watchmen was re was released in the current climate post Deadpool, Watchmen would have gotten would have gotten revered more than what it is now. But it is what it is. But how does Watchmen hold up ten years later from its post release? I think this movie holds up brilliantly. I, like I said, I think this movie is fantastic. From its casting to its story, to its direction, from its, to its production values, I can't say enough good things about Watchmen. Let's break it down now. Well, the cast of this movie is outstanding. This movie does not have any big name actors, but it has solid actors. You have Jackie Earl Haley, who plays Warshak, and he kills it as Warshak. He is the best part of this movie, is Jackie Earl Haley as Warshak. This was the movie that pretty much gave Jackie Earl Haley a career renaissance, and this is what got him the Freddy Krueger role. But his performance as Warshak, outstanding. It's brilliant. And I just love the whole look of Warshak. I like his detectives. I like how he's a detective. Oh, like, I like the detective aspect of Warshak, and I like how when he, when he does his fights, he is brutal, he is sadistic, and he pulls no punches, and Jackie Earl Haley pulls it off brilliantly. Patrick Wilson plays uh, Night Owl, and I like Patrick Wilson as an actor, and I like him in the role of Daniel Dryberg Night Owl. I like how he's this, this common man <clears throat> who is this everyday guy who is kind of who kind of has like an empty life, and he even says it in the movie that he needs his night owl suit in order to have some kind of fulfillment in his life because his life is boring. But he has a lot of good moments with Warshak and I really buy, I buy them as being friends and former partners. Uh, I like the romance that that uh, night that uh, that uh, night owl and the silk specter uh, Lori have. It's well developed and it works for me. Speaking of Lori, she's played by Melene Ankerman. Ackerman, and I thought she was fine in the role. She can, there's a couple of moments she can come across as a little bit bland here and there, but overall, I thought she held her own. I thought she was fine. Uh, Billy Crudup as Dr. Manhattan, John Osterman. The whole look of Dr. Manhattan is, yeah, you got a blue dong swinging in your face throughout this entire movie. This guy couldn't wear shorts, but from a performance standpoint, I like Billy Crudup's performance. I like how he just gives Dr. Manhattan this just plain emotionless voice and that's just because Dr. Manhattan has become detached from humanity like when he was John Osterman he was a brilliant scientist and because of a lab accident he became this super powered being in this real world <clears throat> and he pretty much loses all of his he pretty much almost loses all his humanity with the only link to his humanity being the relationship he has with Lori but they have a falling out and this is what causes Lori to hook up with Dryberg and I like and Manhattan, very complex character, very good character to boot. Uh, Matthew Good as Adrian Veidt, Ozzy Mendy is. I thought Matthew Good did a good job in the role, but I think, <laughs> from a directing standpoint, Zack Schneider really telegraphed the fact that uh, that Adrian Veidt was the bad guy, 
pretty much from the first moment we see Vite, we're like, yeah, he's the villain. Like, Schneider didn't even come close to making it a mystery. It's like he just screams out villain to you. Just the way, just his posturing, the way he talks, just the way he looks. And in the original book, Vite was more complex than that. Vite was like this charismatic, very likable guy. And when it's revealed that he was the villain, you're like shocked that, that, that this man did it. This fight, you can tell that he has something up his sleeve. I would just call that bad direction on Zack Schneider's part. I'm not blaming the actor Matthew Good for it, though I have to, I gotta put the blame on Zack Schneider for not fully articulating exactly how Adrian Veidt should have acted in this movie. But from a performance standpoint, I thought Matthew Good did an okay job. Uh, the, the character of Ozzy Mendy is in this movie. We don't really get to know a lot about his backstory and stuff like that, which is kind of a shame because I would have liked to know who Ozzy Mendy's backstory because that would have given more context as to why he did what he did, which is pretty much wiping out, <laughs> which is pretty much killing billions, which is pretty much save it, killing millions to save billions and to unite the world in world peace because in this movie, the Soviets and the USA are on the brink of nuclear holocaust. And pretty much Ozzy Mendez frames Dr. Manhattan in order to unite the world against a common enemy. And that's how he causes world peace. Pretty much plays a he pretty much he plays a practical joke on the entire world. It's really just sinister and it's a devious plot. And I really wish we would have gotten a more uh, after a portrayal of Adrian Veidt from a character and personality standpoint because we would have understood where he was coming from better instead of how he was portrayed in the movie. Again, not taking anything away from Matthew Good. I just would have liked his direction to be a little more smoother and not as typical villainy. <clears throat> Another standout cast member for me, aside from Warshack, has got to be <laughs> Jeffrey D. Morgan as Edward Blake, the comedian. The comedian is the scum of the earth of a human being. He is a rapist. He is a child killer. He has no compassion. He has no soul from what it looks like. However, the comedian is also one of the more complex characters in this movie. Because even though he does sadistic things, we kind of feel sorry for him. Because there is a scene where he's talking to one of his arch nemesis named Morlock. Where he regrets all the things he's ever done. And us as an audience member, we're just like, I feel sorry for this guy. <laughs> like, he legitimately feels so much... He legitimately feels so much compassion for all the heinous things that he does that he regrets that, that he regrets doing it. And of course, at the beginning of this movie, the comedian is killed off, but his death is what sets off the chain of events in this movie. So he's in a very important character, and you needed a good actor to bring that character to life and to balance out the emotional depth. And Jeffrey D. Morgan, to me, did an outstanding job as the comedian. He fits that role like a glove. And I just love the, the look of the comedian as well. <clears throat> you know, he, he wears like these red, white, and blue outfit, yet he's a complete scumbag. <laughs> and yet, he's one of the more well-rounded well characters in this movie as well. Now, this movie also has got some good side characters to itself as well. You have Hollis Mason, and I like the uh, mentor, the, uh, the uh, father-son relationship he has with uh, Night Owl, who, who t with uh, Dryberg who Hollis was the original Night Owl, he handed the mentor off to Dryberg. So I love that student mentor slash father son figure that they, they have, I think it's well developed. Uh, I like the original Six Spectre, Lori's uh, mother, uh, Lori's mother is Sally Jupiter. I like how they have a, a very uneasy relationship and I like how it's revealed that it was actually the comedian and, <clears throat> and Sally who gave birth to Lori, it's revealed that Lori is the daughter of the comedian. And I like and I like how the comedian, when he was a Minuteman and a teammate of Sally, tried to rape Sally. Then years later, Sally went to the comedian for comfort. It's like I said, everyone in this movie, there's a lot of shades of gray in here. Like not no one in this movie, no one in this story is a hero. Everyone has their own problems and everyone has their own things that you just like, well, why would you do that for? You know, Sally basically cheated on her husband with a man who attempted to rape her and in so doing so they had a daughter out of that contradiction as Dr. Manhattan would say so I like all that stuff it's, it just it makes these characters more complex and just much more interesting Oof. from a production now 
let's talk about the production. From an aesthetic standpoint, this movie looks outstanding. I love Zack Schneider as a visual artist. What he brought to 300, he refined in Watchmen. This is a beautifully looking movie, and you can tell that Zack Schneider took painstaking ease to use the Watchmen graphic novel as a storyboard, because there are a lot of scenes that are completely lifted from the actual panels itself, and it looks brilliant on screen. And again, I always, I'll always admire Zack Schneider, Zack Schneider as a visual storyteller. He's outstanding, he's brilliant, I love his directing style. I love how he directs action sequences. This movie's got really, really good action sequences. I love the scenes where Warshak is fighting off a bunch of cops who are trying to arrest him. I, <clears throat> I like the scenes where Dr. Manhattan and the comedian are in Vietnam just wrecking shop and killing everybody. Uh, the scene where Dan and Lori are getting mugged by a bunch of knock cops in the alley, and it's a brutal fight. I mean, Lori and Dan fuck these guys up, breaking limbs, breaking bones. It's brutal, it's graphic, it's bloody, and I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, from a, like I said, from a story standpoint, the movie is well direct, is well crafted from a story standpoint. You know, I mean, it also try, tries to juggle a lot of subplots. There's, because I've seen, because I'm doing, I'm talking about the ultimate cut. So in the ultimate cut of the movie, there's this uh, story called The Black Freighter, which is a comic book with inside the movie that is spliced in in certain moments of the story. Now, that can drag the story down a little bit, and, because it, it, it can seem also out of place as well, but I don't mind it because we get to hear Gerard Butler in those scenes, and Gerard Butler has such a commanding and just hypnotic voice that you just can't help but listen to him when he talks. Uh, and this movie also has also got this subplot with this news, with this news vendor, Bernie, who is, also with this kid, who's also called Bernard, who's reading the comic book. So they have a nice little subplot going to themselves. Uh, I think the, uh, uh, whew, this movie has so much to talk about this movie. I'm doing my best to try and just streamline it. So yeah, some of the subplots in this movie, they're good. And some of them, you can take them away and it would kind of not really ruin the story that much at all. It would actually make the story a little more streamlined. But that's, you need to let you know what that is, what it is. Uh, yeah. Damn, yeah, from an aesthetic standpoint, like I said, Zack Schneider captures the 1985 aesthetic. And I also like how he put on, how he did his own little satiricalness. Like, a lot of the costumes in this movie, they parody that of Batman and Robin. He has a lot of political figures that he parodies as well, like uh, Fidel Castro and stuff like that. And, yeah, Zack Schneider put his own little uh, satirical spin on this movie as well to kind of give it his own little unique feel, which I, which I can appreciate and what I love about And also what I love about Watchmen itself. Hmm. Whew. And I also like how this movie handled a lot of the origin stories for this movie. We get to see the origin story of, Doc, of Doc, John Oshman, Dr. Manhattan. And I love the music that plays during that. It's really grand scale. It's really epic. And it fits the scenes perfectly. Uh, I like how we get inside Warshak's head when he gets arrested. And the, and the scene where he brutalizes this child killer is just graphic and brutal. And I love it, love it, love it. Oof. So, yeah, listen, there is so much more to talk about this movie, but I'm going to stop it right here because this review is going on way too long. Overall, as you can tell, I love Watchmen, and despite a couple of things with it, I'm going to give it a solid 9 out of 10. This movie is such a much watch. It still holds up today. It's still one of the best superhero comic book movies to be put on screen, and I wish this movie would have been released post-Deadpool because it would have gotten a much better reception, and it would be remembered much, much more. So yeah, 9 out of 10 for Watchmen. I highly recommend this movie. Go out and watch it if you haven't seen it. And if you haven't seen it in a long time, definitely give it a rewatch because you're missing out on something special. So yeah, those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. Like the video and subscribe, and I'll check it back next time for more.